Howdy guys, it's Audrey Steeman again. In this video, uh, we're going to be tackling the daunting task of importing our 2D design from Illustrator into After Effects. Now this is obviously the most crucial part because how else are we supposed to get our design into After Effects to animate it and everything? But sometimes there can be some little glitchy things that happen that kind of prevent the design looking uh, like its true state that it was meant to be in. Um, can move things around, sometimes you can't find layers. Uh, random things like that happen all the time. But in this video, I'm gonna quickly go about my process of importing um, Illustrator stuff into After Effects using Overlord, and then I'm gonna go over the traditional method of importing using kind of the default um, import options from After Effects. Now a couple things, a couple housekeeping things to keep uh, aware of when, when doing this. Um, you wanna make sure that your layers are named. This is just good practice. Uh, it's not gonna affect importing or anything, but it's just good practice. Making sure that everything that needs to be visible is visible on your artboard. Uh, I'm pretty sure in After Effects too, if a layer happens to be turned off in Illustrator, it'll turn off in After Effects, but you can just turn it back on. Also making sure that your artboard size is the same as your composition size in After Effects is pretty crucial. Be aware of clipping masks in uh, Illustrator and how you kind of organize those layers. It shouldn't be a problem in After Effects, but Nonetheless, um, importing layers on their own and then using set mats and um, alpha channels and stuff like that in After Effects should help that too. So let's get to importing our 2D design. So here we are in After Effects and I'm gonna make a new composition. Just call it 00 main comp for now. Um, and it's already at 1080 by 1350, which is what we want, 24 frames a second. Uh, in eight seconds. I think it just kind of kept the same settings from our animatic, so I'll just press OK. And so here is our main comp, and I think the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to actually start to import the hand stuff just because um, there's a lot of little pieces there and want it to kind of get organized right off the bat. So I'm going to go to my layers panel. I'm going to actually drag out Overlord here as well. So we're only just going to focus on this top portion of the layers right now because that's what the hand design stuff is. Um, so I'll just start with the wrist. And you kind of want to look at these settings here in Overlord before you do anything. So if you take a deeper look at all of these settings, um, I don't usually touch all of these. It's mostly these four right here that I really pay attention to. Really, it depends too if, you, if you're importing like a grouped set of design layers or objects, um, or if you want to split those apart. Um, centering anchor points, I'm gonna do that. This is layers at comp center, which I don't wanna click. I want to have the layers import exactly where they are in the artboard and illustrator. So I'm gonna check off split shapes into layers, just so I have a little more control in taking each of the layers and it doesn't dissect it. Like I don't want these joints and finger bits to, to dissect or anything. I wanted them to stay as groups. So I'm just going to check that off for now. So I'm going to start with the wrist. Literally just click uh, push selection to After Effects. And then you can immediately see here it just with a click of a button it just pushes it to After Effects and it's in the same exact place as it was in Illustrator which is awesome. And it's already named so we don't have to rename any of those layers which is awesome. So I'm actually just going to kind of make these windows smaller here so I can kind of see both and it doesn't have to switch between applications too much and then you can just see how going from Illustrator to After Effects it's super quick and it's super simple cool and now that we have all of our hand into After Effects, I'm just gonna go ahead and pre-comp these just to organize a little bit. Let's call that hand. And then I'll keep continuing to add all the other design stuff to this. Cool, now that all of the Illustrator layers are imported into After Effects, I'm just gonna, gonna make another pre-comp with those as well. Hey 
Hey guys, so here we're going to import our 2D design from Illustrator into After Effects using the traditional or default method. So here I have my design on my artboard and you'll notice that before I had the hand on a different artboard and I had um, kind of the background here on its own artboard as well. Um, but for this to work, you'll want to have all of the design on one artboard. Um, and you'll see why here in a second, but essentially um, anything that's outside of the main artboard uh, it's not going to see it um, immediately in After Effects and you'll have to kind of manually pull that over uh, which can affect the design and, and the exact uh, measurements and stuff that you work so hard to do in Illustrator. So, um, so make sure that this is saved. So I have the same exact dimensions of our artboard in your Illustrator, going to be the same thing in After Effects as well. So if we go to After Effects, um, I just made a new project real quick just to show, um, but I'm going to right click and Click import, file. You'll click on the file here and down here, you'll see import as. You wanna hit composition, retain layer sizes so it doesn't skew any of the design or move it around or anything. And then you should hit import. So here it makes a composition of everything for you. Um, so we don't have to necessarily make a new composition um, with those same sizes because if you go to composition settings here, should be the same exact thing as it was in Illustrator. Make sure it's 24 frames a second and that it's the exact same time that you need it to be. So that's all good and dandy. Now the thing that kind of takes a little while, you'll see that all of the all the layers here are named and everything, which is awesome, but everything here is still an Illustrator file. So if you move these layers around, you can kind of see that it's one singular kind of object, which is good, but if we like scale this up, and even if we do the continue to rasterize, um, that's fine. But typically that's not the way you want to work with um, shapes like this in After Effects. You want to make these into shape layers so you can edit the points. And if you need to make specific shapes and have the paths move around, you want to turn all these into shapes. So what I'm going to do, it's pretty simple. You just want to click all of the layers, hold shift, and then you right click, create, and create shapes from vector layer. It'll kind of take a minute, depending on the amount of layers that you have. And you'll see that it makes a copy of each layer or each of the, I guess, Illustrator um, information, and it'll make a shape layer for you. Now, the annoying part of this is that you have to kind of go in and just delete all of the Illustrator components, so you just have shape layers, but it's not too bad. But the, the best part is that everything is named, even though it has outlines at the end of it, you'll still know what it means. And then you can continue to pre-comp it however you see fit, uh, label, color code, all that good stuff. Now something else I'm going to do too, um, because the design is super flat right now, I want to add a little bit more of that texture that we had uh, in the initial sketch back in. So I'm going to go into Procreate and just kind of add a little bit of frame by frame detail to like the oranges and probably the hand too, but I'm probably going to do the hand after it's animated so I can kind of track that and and know exactly where I need to put those details and not try to guess beforehand. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. In the next video, I'm gonna be covering kind of a brief overview of my 3D Cinema 4D file uh, and how I went about modeling the class. I'm not gonna walk through every single second of me modeling and lighting and rendering this uh, 3D glass part, but I'll just kind of quickly go over my Cinema 4D file and just kind of talk through the mental process of going about modeling something like that. Even if you're new to Cinema 4D, it should be pretty simple and just using a couple different objects and modifiers and shape builders and stuff like that. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.